Hello, in this video we will be unboxing and installing the Lynx AES-16E. Now this right here is studio grade equipment. This is what you would see in a pro mastering studio. What this is, is this is a 16 channel AES-EBU PCI Express audio interface. What this allows you to do is hook up high-end ADCs and DACs to your computer or also known as your DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. You may be asking, most modern audio interfaces, DACs, ADCs, they're all able to connect via USB. Well, that may be true, but top of the line, world-class ADCs and DACs, such as the Pacific Microsonics Model 2 or the Lavery Gold, are going to be AES-EBU only. You're going to see AES-EBU devices mainly in professional audio applications, not in the prosumer or consumer audio realm space. So um, this basically turns my computer into a full-blown studio-grade audio workstation. I'll be able to connect up to 16 channels in and 16 channels out. Now that would be 16 mono channels. So if you're gonna have a stereo pair, which you usually have left and right, you're gonna have eight, eight inputs and eight outputs effectively. So eight DACs and eight ADCs. Now that is kind of overkill for my application. I'm only gonna have one DAC and one ADC, but um, I want to connect them via AES-EBU. You may be wondering, why you're connecting it via ASABU? Are you using a really, really high-end ADC, such as Pacific Microsoft, so you're not able to connect via USB? Well, no, both my ADC and DAC choice do have USB available. But on my specific computer, I have had some issues and flakiness with USB when it comes to audio. Um, USB on some computers depend on their chipset, um, the CPU, the USB controller, it really just depends on the computer. On my old Asus laptop, I didn't really have any issues um, with DACs or ADCs, um, but on my new workstation, I have had a couple um, issues. First off, my um, GDS Labs OL USB DAC, um, when I first got it, I noticed it would have an occasional ticking almost like a skipping CD, but not not really. It doesn't like, the audio wouldn't like repeat itself. It would just have a little, t just a little tick every now and then. And um, being an audiophile, you're, you're kind of really um, noticeable to that. I did check to make sure there wasn't any um, DPC latency issues or anything like that. Um, and I did plug it directly into the motherboard on the back. Um, usually you want to connect DAX via USB 2.0 which I did, then I decided, oh, well, let's switch it over to USB 3.0 because that would use a different controller. It'll be using Asmedia instead of Intel. That did not fix the issue. Um, it then escalated um, to where sometimes the DAC would just completely drop off, meaning um, it would just show like it's been fully disconnected. Um, I also checked in settings to make sure that um, you know, USB would never sleep because sometimes power options and stuff like that, um, your USB controller can um, um, power down ports, per se, <laughs> um, for, you know, power options to save power and stuff when devices are idle or they're not being used for quite quite a long time. So I made sure all the power options were right. I, you know, I did other things such as um, make sure the CPU wouldn't down clock and, you know, because, you know, CPUs uh, on power options, you can have it to where it will downclock during idle and stuff like that. Check C states. There's all types of things when it comes to audio. Um, we can go on and nitpick about different types of settings. But, yes, I tried everything. And the one thing that fixed it is plugging the DAC into a USB-powered hub. So active almost like it was a power issue. Now, the JDS Labs OL DAC is... Um, powered via an AC adapter, so it doesn't rely on the USB power, um, which is kind of weird, but um, I don't know. So I was able to solve the JDS Labs DAC issue uh, by plugging it directly into a USB hub that's powered, 
and haven't had any issues since. Now, um, with my ADC, I currently use the crappy Behringer. Um, I believe it's a UMC 202 HD. And I believe it uses a XMOS chip for USB. And with it, I haven't had any taking or random drop-offs, but sometimes when I'm speaking, um, when, I, when I say a word, um, say I say hot dogs or whatever, it might um, cut off some of that word and just conjoin, conjoin it, if that makes sense, um, to where it's not skipping or repeating or anything. It just um, captures maybe the beginning and the end of the word, if that makes sense. So it's like there's some data missing. Um, it only happens... Um, Every now and then, it's intermittent, just like the other issue with the DAC, intermittent. Um, now, as far as USB on the workstation, everything else, webcams, keyboards, peripherals, USB flash drives, what have you, everything just works flawless. I haven't had any issues with anything. The only thing I've had issues with is audio devices, DACs, ADCs, etc. Now, I haven't tested the... Um, the audio input with my Logitech webcam to see if there's an issue with the audio on the webcam. I might I might test that later. But anyway, I don't know. USB can be either good or bad. Just it's a clusterfuck. USB was not designed for audio. Period. Um, now there, will, of course, will be people um, that will bitch and complain and say, well, you know, if you use um, USB, you have you know asynchronous and you can have the um, USB controller sync up to the, the DAX clock, and the DAC can use its own internal clock, which is better for jitter issues, etc. Yeah, that may be true, but um, with ASEBU, it's a professional interface, and um, the jitter issue pretty much is non existent. Um, the main problem with SPDIF and ASEBU is that the, the um, device that's talking to has to sync the clock with the DAC or the ADC, if that makes sense. Um, the DAC or ADC has to follow the clock of the source, if that makes sense. And that can introduce um, jitter issues. We're not going to go dive into all that, but um, when you get into professional audio, there's phase lock loops, etc., to where the source can sync up to the clock of the DAC or ADC, and your jitter practically drops um, drastically. Um, on consumer devices, um, consumer audio devices that use SPDIF, um, yeah, you'll have you'll have a jitter issue compared to USB. But we're dealing with professional audio devices. Um, jitter is basically going to be a non-issue. So using an AES EBU interface, um, rather than just plugging DACs and ADCs in via USB, basically get rid of all the USB flakiness. That all that working with USB controllers and the glitchiness of USB, um, the intermittent C of it, if that makes sense. Um, like some DACs I connect to the computer work fine. Like my Fire Q1, I haven't had any issues with my Fire Q1. Have had some issues with a couple other devices. It's just it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> and then those those devices, such as the JDS Labs, work fine on a different computer, but they don't work fine on this computer. Or this this DAC works fine on both computers. It's just ugh. I'm just, I'm tired of the bullshit. And plus, if I'm getting a really, really, if I upgrade down the road to a really, really high-end ADC and DAC, world-class grade, those aren't going to have USB available. It's just going to be AES-CBU because that is mainly what they use in professional studios. So, say I do get a Pacific Microsonics Model 2, I already have an AES-CBU interface in my computer so I could just connect it right up to the computer. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I digress. So, um, I'll be upgrading my DAC and ADC later on, of course. My um, ADC will be the Lynx Hilo, and my um, DAC will be the Topping D90. And those both, you know, have AES-ABU um, connect connectability. So, I'll be connecting these to the AES-16E here. Now, this is a PCI Express model. This came out in about 2007, 2008. Um, so, it's been around a long time. But they also had the regular AS16, which was a PCI um, board. And that came out like 1998-ish. Um, AS-EBU has been around a long time. It's a mature um, protocol. And um, it's been used in studios for decades. As far as quality, you may be like, well, something that old, it's not going to be as good. 
well, this is a digital interface. There's no conversion happening in this. This isn't like a sound card, a DAC, or ADC. It doesn't have any of that. This just takes the digital signal from the ADC and basically interfaces it to the computer uh, via the Windows um, audio API, whether it be um, WDM, MME, direct sound, etc., or ASIO as well. Um, and it takes um, audio from programs and spits out a digital signal to your DAC via ASCBU, if that makes sense. So all this deals with is just di working with digital um, interfacing between the audio components. Um, no conversion, it's not a sound card. Um, and you're maybe asking, well, why, did, why didn't you get a sound card? Well, that's another debate for <laughs> another topic. Um, Usually, I prefer outboard ADCs and DACs because they're going to be much higher um, quality. And um, most sound cards and stuff are definitely consumer grade. Yes, there are studio grade sound cards. Like Lynx do have like a consumer grade um, board that goes in the computer that has a DAC and ADC on board as well. But um, even then, outboard DACs and ADCs um, pretty much um, take the cake. <laughs> they, they're going to be your, um, if you want the absolute best, you definitely want outboard. So let me go ahead and discuss some of the features of this. Um, it is a times one PCI express interface works with both Macintosh and windows PC, windows PCs with PCI express ports, eight stereo inputs and eight stereo outputs, AS EBU format, 24 bit single wire and dual wire. Now that is important. This does support dual wire AS EBU, which means it will be able to talk to the Pacific Microsonics up to those higher sam sample rates, such as 176 or 192, um, where if you want to use those higher sample rates on like a Pacific Microsonics, you have to be using dual wire. You can't be using single wire. So this does support um, dual wire, which is awesome. Now, it does say on here um, 96 and 192 for dual wire. I didn't see it mention 176, but I'm pretty sure it would support 176 dual wire. Um, Cause usually you wanna have um, proper decim decimation. If you're gonna do a CD master, you wanna use 176 kilohertz um, when you down sample to 44. Not, you don't wanna be using 92 or 192, you know, for best quality. So um, it is also transformer coupled. Um, it does have a 32 by 16 onboard digital mixer for everything to everything monitor mixing, optional 16 channels of sample rate conversion, um, support for conversion ratios up to 16 by one with 142 decibel dynamic range. Now, like I said, this is, since it's all digital, the specifications, the performance of this, excellent. Like the dynamic range, I believe is like 144 decibels and the THD was like minus... I can't remember what it was. It was minus something outrageous. I'll um, overlay the the, spe the specs of this device. Like I said, they're gonna be um, phenomenal. Cause this is pure digital. You're not doing any conversion or anything like that. Um, that is what your ADC and DAX for that you're hooking up to it. So um, even though this is from like 2007, 2008, the performance, state of the art as far as the um, SNR, dynamic range, THD plus N, et cetera, is gonna be um, literally state of the art. Like even if they come out with uh, a way better um, DAC in the future, this will still be able to, um, you're still gonna get the best experience um, out of said DAC or ADC in the future. Um, this is definitely not gonna be a bottleneck anytime soon. So um, optional AES 50 interface, um, Multi-channel support for 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound playback formats. So if you're into watching movies and you're into having surround sound and all that shit, it does have um, multi-channel support. Um, this has synchro lock, um, sample rate clock generator for 3,000 to 1 and jitter reduction. So that's part of that, um, like I said, when we talk, we're talk, we going into jitter and stuff, people say USB, 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 because you can use the DAC or ADC clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on professional ASCBU, they're going to have um, such jitter reduction technologies, phase lock loops, etc. So this does have a um, jitter reduction, of course. Supports ASIO and WDM for Windows and Core Audio for Mac OS X. Easy driver installation. 
ideal for in-studio or remote recording applications. And the price of this, this was $700, um, not cheap. And you may be asking, $700? It's not a sound card, doesn't have a DAC, doesn't have an ADC? What the fuck, $700? Yes, when you start getting into professional studio grade equipment, I'm not talking consumer grade or prosumer. I'm talking professional audio equipment that is in professional studios by like the top label companies, etc. Prices of studio grade equipment is usually thousands and thousands of dollars. Microphones, usually a couple grand. Your ADC is usually five grand, 10 grand. You don't, don't even want to get into consoles. Those are like half a million dollars. $700 is a lot of money to a normal person, but in a studio, pocket change. Now, another thing that brings up the price drastically, made in USA. This is fully manufactured and made in the United States. You ain't going to find that with your, you know, average, you know, consumer equipment. Even prosumer equipment is going to be all made in China or made in Taiwan or something like that. This is made in USA. Most professional audio equipment is going to be made in USA, made in the UK, made in Canada, or made in Germany. Um... The British make a lot of professional audio equipment. So does so does a lot of German companies like Neumann microphones. Um, sure, except well, Sure is a U.S. company, um, but um, a lot of companies are German. A lot of companies are British. U.S. Those are pretty much the main countries I see when it comes to really professional audio. So this is fully made in USA. Now, if this was made in China, it'd probably be like three hundred dollars or four hundred dollars. But no, since it's made in the USA and you're you're paying American salaries, <laughs> it's not going to be cheap. Just like the Pacific Microsonics Model Two, made in USA, twenty five grand. Just like the um, Lynx Hilo that I'm going to be getting, which is like I believe it's like twenty six hundred dollars, made in USA. Um, just like the preamp I'm going to be getting later on, the Avalon VT seven three seven SP, that's like thirty two hundred dollars or thirty six hundred dollars or whatever it is, it's like it's on. I'll, I'll overlay the price. Yeah, made in USA. So when you have something that's actually made in USA, not not assembled, made the full thing, it's gonna cost a shit ton of money. So um, you best believe the quality of this is going to be um, good. And yep, it says right here on the brochure, designed and manufactured in the USA by Lynx Studio Technology Inc. Also, another thing that is great about using PCI Express rather than USB is latency. When people are recording audio, um, especially um, musicians and stuff, say they have instruments and stuff, say like a, a keyboard or whatever, and they press a key on the keyboard and they're listening back via their computer, via their DAC, and they hear delay, that is not good. So you want to have low latency, as low as possible. And PCI Express, the latency is going to be much better compared to USB. So that's another pro as well. Yeah, we get rid of all the, the flakiness and the, sometimes the weird compatibility issues with USB. Also, not to mention drivers. <laughs> that's, an, that's another um, can of worms is um, drivers. Um, whereas I can have, you know, hundreds of different DACs and ADCs and... They all just hook up via ASCB. Boom, plug and play. Don't have to worry about drivers, installing drivers, nothing. You just install drivers of this card, which are going to be rock solid because this has been around a long time. And Lynx still do provide driver updates for their the original AES-16, which was released in 1998, and they're still doing drivers for it. So you best believe it. Driver quality and support, you know, keeping 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 it updated and maintained. They do that. Um, so you don't have to install drivers for the, the Lynx card and everything else just hooks right up. And that's another thing. There's a, uh, there's a newer DAC out from shit audio. Um, it requires, um, for USB windows 10 only for drivers, but guess what? I can hook that up to my windows seven workstation via ASDBU using the Lynx card. So awesome, right? <laughs> you, you, you also get that benefit as well. Um, to where, you know, newer DAX ADCs and stuff like that. Um, if you're using USB, you're going to be locked down as far as what OSs are going to be supported and stuff. And you have to worry about, you know, 
if your chipset is going to behave or the USB controller and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I've heard Haswell CPUs can have issues with USB audio. Um, it, can, it can be a clusterfuck when it comes to USB. Um, it either works or it works intermittently. Like I said, on my old laptop, I haven't had any issues um, with my DAX and stuff. But on my workstation, I've had some slight issues, which I have um, alleviated and fixed. But um, it's just, it's annoying, and um, I'm ready to go full professional grade. Um, and I'm plus, if I, when and if I do get very, very world-class grade equipment, it's going to have AESCBU only anyway. And I already have that available to me, which is awesome. Now, as far as the drivers on here, it supports WDM, MME, ASIO 2.0, direct sound, and direct kernel streaming, along with core audio for Mac OS. As far as Linux, um, I believe there was somebody, there was a company that made Linux drivers for this card, but I could be mistaken. I would um, reach out to Links for more information on that. And of course, 64-bit drivers are available. Low latency, dr latency drivers for Macintosh supports core audio. Yep. Direct connect cabling available for digital mixers, recorders, and converters. Um, for Lynx Studio Technology, Yamaha, Tascam, Mackie, Ap Apogee, or Apology, or however you pronounce them, Benchmark, Media, etc. Um, as far as sample rate, this goes up to 384 kilohertz, 24 bit. Um, there's no reason to ever go that high. Um, if you're doing CD masters, you usually want to do 24, um, 176. But um, yeah, so that's it as far as um, going over. Um, so let's, let's actually take a look at the unit and unbox it. So on the front, um, the packaging isn't going to be as eye candy because when you deal with more professional um, equipment and stuff, they're not gearing this towards consumers. This is going to be like on a on a Walmart shelf. <laughs> so um, packaging is going to be um, pretty basic whenever it comes to more um, professional grade audio equipment and stuff like that. So it says AS16E, 192 kilohertz. Although I did see... Um, I did see 384. Oh, that's an upcoming feature from firmware, firmware and driver updates, and that is using dual wire. Okay, so single wire and uh, maybe currently still 192 kilohertz. I don't know if they have 384 or whatever it is. Yeah, 384. I don't know if they have that yet. If they do, doesn't matter. <laughs> Multi-channel, ASEBU, PCI Express interface, Link Studio technology. Mac OS X, Windows, PCI Express. On this side just says, you know, our model AS16E, 16 channel PCI Express, AES EBU interface. I did already register this with Lynx Hilo um, for the warranty and everything. So you do want to go and register your product as soon as you get it. Um, this is where all oops, this is where all the meat and potatoes happens here. So, 192 kilohertz multi-channel AS EBU PCI Express interface. Um, we have the regular base model. There is also a sample rate conversion model. We're not going to get into what that is or why or if you will need it. Um, in my application, I won't. So, the AES16E family of PCI E cards provides connectivity between a variety of digital audio equipment and computer-based workstations using, using AES EBU and optionally AES50 protocols. AES16E also tightly integrates with Lynx Aurora converters, allowing remote control of all Aurora functions. This car, the cards are standard half size times one PCI Express, adding cards which can be inserted into times one, times two, times four, and times sixteen PCI PCI Express slots. I believe we're going to plug it into a times four. The include drivers provide compatibility with all pro popular Windows and Mac audio recording and editing software. Now you may be at, you may be asking, um, will this work with Google Chrome, um, Spotify, and your regular applications? Yes, it will because it has WDM drivers. So this won't be just limited to your DAW. 
you should be able to use this for all your programs. It should be just like almost like a sound card type of deal, but it's not a sound card. Um, so yes, it should work with everything because it has WDM drivers. And that's actually what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use it for everything. FUBAR, Google Chrome, Spotify, all my programs, okay? And it will show up as an audio device. The AES-16E builds on the capabilities of the industry standard AES-16 with an improved feature set that takes full advantage of the bi-directional capabilities of the 2.5 gigabit per second PCI Express um, bus. It optimized, it, its optimized DMA engine supports simultaneous bus reads and write transactions and integrates tightly with AES-IO and WDM drivers. The onboard digital mixer provides more than six times the processing power of its predecessor. So it's just telling you, hey, PCI Express is a better interface, and hey, we're going to use it. And it's good that you get this card because, you know, you're not going to find PCI in any modern motherboard. I mean, that's that's went the way of the dodo. So, um, yeah, yeah, you'll find the regular AES-16 on eBay and stuff, selling for cheap, because most computers nowadays, most motherboards, aren't going to have PCI. They're going to have PCI Express. So, um this is future proof in that um, <clears throat> for that reason. Integrates digital consoles, multi channel AD slash DA, that means ADCs or DACs. So AD slash DA converters and hard disk recorders with computer based workstations. Um, eight stereo inputs, eight stereo outputs, 16 mono, 24 bit, single and dual wire, transformer coupled, extensive onboard digital mixer. Um, 144 decibel dynamic range, multi-channel 5.1, 7.1 surround playback formats, has a synchro lock. Um, it's going to show Windows XP and Vista because obviously when this first came out, that's what was around then, around the Vista era. Of course, this does have native drivers for Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10. And they also do driver signing too, which is good. Um, so yes, just because this is, this, um, came out a long time ago, doesn't mean they're not updating it for modern operating systems. They are. Okay. So it'll work flawless on windows seven, flawless on windows 10 and what have you. So if you see XP and Vista on here, that's just because they haven't updated the packaging. <laughs> um, easy driver installation for windows, Mac OS designed and manufactured in the U S right there. As far as the box, that's re there's really not much on it. Um, it just shows the, you know, card. Now, um, the cables are not included, which kind of sucks. Um, I guess they figure most people, studios and stuff, they're going to use their own cables or have custom cables already made for their application. But um, you will have to buy cables, and I will um, show the cables here. So um, to connect it to your DAC or ADC, you're going to need the CB, the CBL-AS1604. This is about a 60, 60 or $70 cable. I'll overlay the price and everything. Um, I did get this cable. Um, now, if you want to fully utilize the links and you're going to be connecting like eight DACs and ADCs, you're going to have to get two of these cables. But so if you're only going to connect up to four, you only need one of these cables. But um, like I said... <laughs> I'm only connecting one DAC and one ADC. Um, I do have this cable. I will show it here in a, in a bit. Um, but I did get a custom cable made because this the cable that you get from the cable that you buy from Lynx, it's going to have four inputs and four outputs, and then um, it's going to have the word clock sync as well. Um, and yes, this can sync via word clock B and C. Um, it can also as, a, act as a time reference, or it can sync over the um, ASEBU. Um, that, that was another thing as well, but, um, this cable, since I'm not using more than, you know, I'm not using four DACs or anything, there's going to be a lot of unused connectors and it's going to be very bulky and have a bunch of shit sticking out my computer. So I did get a custom cable made and I will show that as well. So let's go ahead and, um, unbox this first. Um, this unboxing should be, um, straightforward. Now this does say it has insulation user guide. Um, on CD-ROM, quick start guide, the drivers, which is probably going to be a disc. But my brother also bought one of these for his workstation. We unboxed it, and it just had just the card. So um, we're going to see if that's the same case. 
Now they say on here, it includes all that stuff, you know, the disc and the manual and everything else. But based on another card I unboxed, it didn't. Not a big issue. You can go online, download all, download the manual and drivers. But, um, hmm, kind of interesting, right? So we'll, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and um, unbox it. So it was um, shrink wrapped. So I took the shrink wrap off of it. So there is the card. We have it unboxed. Um, as you see, they did not include a, a CD or anything or a manual. They just included a little quick start guide that tells you, hey, do you have the cables that you need? Because we don't include them. <laughs> um, and then they show you just a diagram of the cable installation and everything, which, of course, I will overlay, which you can see it can get kind of crazy. You know, you have like thousands of wires coming out of this thing because you know it can connect a lot of audio devices but um in my application i will not need all those cables so i did have a custom cable made um this is what the card looks like um as you see it does have some jumpers some headers it does also have expansion i believe that was for the as50 oh and another thing is you can also have up to four of these in a single computer so if you need um, even more inputs and outputs, <laughs> you may be wondering, why does somebody need 16 ADCs or 16 DACs or something like that? Um, I, well, I know why someone would need 16 ADCs. Um, well, if you're in a studio, you're going to have lots and lots of microphones, lots of inputs, um, as you could imagine, right? Have the, the singer, all the instruments, the guitars, the drums. Um, all those will be different inputs. Um, so having a lot of inputs is great and it will be 16 per card. So if you, um, put four of these in there, that would be 64 inputs. So quite extensive, you know, um, very versatile in that, um, scenario. And it does have two, um, D subs and you, if you're only going to use, um, one DAC and AC, you're, you're just going to use port A. Um, but, um, that's what the card looks like. Um, it does look really, really nice. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but it's a really nice, um, really nice green. Um, right now, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm getting closer to it and looking at the, um, the quality of it, and um, it does look like it's made in USA. There's a difference when you actually look at a PCB um, and compare it to any other electronics or computer parts and stuff like this. This does look really clean really high end like the soldering quality looks um top notch as to be exact as to be ex expected you have two crystal oscillators over here i could get their their specs if i get in really really close i see 
points, was it 152 or something like that? 157? 45.158. Links to Technology Inc. Copyright 2007. Um, so that, that's when the, the car was initially released. That's not when it was manufactured. Um, I could try to find manufacturing date on it, but I'd have to look. Might be on the other side of it. And as you can see, we do have PCI Express times one. On the bottom, test OK, Link Studio Technology. So this was made the 48th week of 2019. That's the manufacturing date right there. 48th week of 2019. Um, yeah, not too much to it. Nice looking card. I'll zoom out and show you guys what the ports look like. So um, that is what the ports look like. You'll obviously plug it in your cable into port A. And obviously, if you have more than four, da four DACs or four ADCs, you'll also utilize port B. You'll use the breakout cable um, that I told you earlier. What was it? The CBL AS1604? Yeah. Uh, which is about, I believe it's about $60 around that range. Um, or you can have custom audio cables made. In my case, like I said, I'm only going to be using one DAC and one ADC. I'm going to be using a Lynx Hilo and a Topping D90. Um, so I don't need to have a bunch of cables. And so the, you're wondering, where do you get these custom cables made? Does Lynx make them? No, unfortunately they don't. But um, I did talk to Lynx and they recommend going to Redco Audio. They're based out of Connecticut and they will make custom cables. You may be asking, ooh, custom, that sounds expensive. Well, the cable I had made was a single D sub to um, ASEBU out and ASEBU in. Just use channel one out and channel one in. I'm going to be connected one DAC, one ADC. And I don't need no work clock sync because I'm going to have the AS, AS16 E card sync to Lynx Hilo Hi over the AS EBU. But um, the cable I had made cost $27. Well, it was actually comes out to about $28. Shipping was about $12. I actually bought two of these cables because my brother needed one as well. So let me go ahead and show you the cables. Okay, so here are um, the cables. This is the main... Um, CBL-AES1604-G cable. This will give you um, four inputs, four outputs of ASCBU. I believe it does have a work clock in and work clock out. And we have your D-sub. Now, I do still have this in the bag, and I'm not going to take it out of the bag. Um, this is not like a resealable bag. Um, I want to keep it in the bag just to um, keep dust off of it and everything. Plus, I'm not using the cable, so it's good to just keep it in the bag and keep it contained. But um, I don't know how well you guys can see it. But um, it's very thick, very bulky. Lots of connectors and cables that I will not be using. So, like I told you guys, I had a custom cable made from Redco Audio. Um, you can go on their site. I will include the link to this already made custom cable so you can just buy it. You don't have to do the configurator and everything. But if you look at this cable... We take a look, we have our, our D sub, and it's a nice metal, you know, solid connector. And then we have our AS EBU in and out, and they are labeled. So, in that's that will connect your um, to your ADC, which will be the link silo. And then you have your out that will connect to your um, DAC, which in my case will be the topping D90. So, as you can see, a much smaller cable much less bulkier only has what i need awesome and it was only like what what i say 28 dollars or something like that um um there is a con though since it's a custom cable and especially with covid and everything that's going on this cable took like four weeks to arrive um so they are having some delays and stuff um well, they already have a delay because it's a custom cable. It usually takes like two weeks or three weeks to make it. But um, with COVID and everything, it, it got delayed for about four weeks. Um, I did reach out and um, he seemed to like expedite, expedite the shipping or whatever because literally as soon as I emailed him, he's like, oh, I'm going to have this out ASAP. And it was literally like here, like almost like the next day or the day after. So um, and the support at Redco um Every time I emailed him, he would reply like 
within 30 minutes every time. So I'm um, very good. The only con was there was a delay, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna give them a break because um yeah with COVID and everything going on I, custom cable, I can understand four weeks is still pretty long. I mean, you're dealing with professional professionals. Obviously, this is a home environment, so we don't have those stringent um, requirements or anything. So I'm being a little bit more lax. But if you have like a professional studio or something trying to buy cables from you they're not going to wait around they want their stuff asap so um but this is for a home environment you know hi-fi listening experience or whatever you want to call it um <laughs> so um we don't have the same requirements but i'm still pretty strict when it comes to stuff like that just because you know who wants to wait around a month or two you know you want your shit you, you pay for it you want it you know but um, anyway, the quality looks pretty good. Um, only thing I don't really like, and it's this is the same issue with the Lynx cable as well, is, yeah, they give you a nice solid cable, but when they get to the actual um, XLR connectors, the cable is very, very thin right there. See what I mean? And these 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 connectors are very heavy, so I feel like this could these could wear, wear out over time. Um, it shouldn't matter if once you have your computer set up, it's not like these cables are going to be moving around a lot. It's going to be pretty much stationary, but, um, it's the same issue with the Lynx cable, like on theirs, you have a thick wire, but right when you get to the, goes to the XR connector is it's like very thin. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this can be a, a point of failure, um, down the road. Um, so not too keen on that part. The connectors are high quality new trick connectors of course which is great but um and i believe I don't, I don't know what i don't know what cable they, they oh yeah they're using mogami cable right here you probably can't see on camera it says mogami part number 3160 110 ohm digital audio multi-cable so using high quality cable but right when it gets to the connectors see what i mean it gets kind of thin which i can feel could be fragile maybe it'll wear out over time Especially because these connectors are heavy. That's what I'm saying. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's a moot point. But um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and install this card into the computer. And then we're going to install the driver. Fortunately, I can't continue too much further on on this video. Um, because I do not have the DAC or ADC yet. So it would just be installation of the card and installation of the driver. And I'll show you how it shows up in the... Um, sounds and devices. Okay, so we are going to install the Lynx AS16E card into my workstation. We got my workstation already down here. Uh, it's been a bit hectic day. Got so much going on. Yanking this workstation out is a very timely process because there's so many things connected everywhere and I need to get everything labeled and oh, there's probably about 50,000 wires coming out of the back of this thing. It's doing 10 gig fiber, doing all kinds of shit. So anyway, Got the Lynx AS16E card here. I'm going to go ahead and pop it out of the box. And we're going to go ahead and install it in our times 8 slot all the way on the bottom. There we go. Lynx AS16E card has been installed all the way in the bottom times um, 8 slot 
um, I'll have to zip tie and tidy up some of these cables under it. But um, yeah, it should be installed and in there. And then um, should be good to go. And on the back, we have our two um, AS EBU ports, and everything is looking pretty splendid. So um, I'll show you guys the back here. So as you can see on the back, we have our Lynx AS 16E card installed into the computer. We got port A and port B. Look at that. Ain't she a beauty? But look at all that I.O. I know. This is this is a beast. You got the 10 gig fiber card. You got all these USB ports. I think we got 14 USB ports in this thing. Got our graphics card, display port. I mean, you got, got a lot going on here. Dual um, Ethernet, which I don't really use, but there's a lot going on here. But um, we'll go ahead and um, continue with um, driver install. Okay, so we have the Lynx card now installed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the um, the driver onto the computer. So if we look in um, Device Manager, you can see right here, Multimedia Audio Controller Device, PCI Slot 4, no driver. And this is the hardware ID for it. So let's go ahead and install the driver. I already downloaded the Lace driver over from um, LynxStudio.com, so it's on my free NAS. So we'll go and go ahead and do that. AS16E, yes. So right here, driver v 2 sep 24 c Hit run, accept, install. Okay, it says it's installed. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna um, install Lynx firmware setup. There's that. So Lynx AS 16E, revision 14.1, latest is 14.1. So we already have the latest um, firmware for our Lynx AS 16E. So we next set that out. So now if I go into recording devices, as you can see right here, the Lynx AS 16E is popping right up. See right here? Popping up. So the question is, does it work? <laughs> and if I go into Device Manager, you can see that multimedia device went away. And we, if we go to Sound, we have the Lynx AS 16E installed right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and. Um, Fire up Fubar. I have Fubar open on my other screen. I'm just going to um, drag it over here. We're going to go into configure output. And I'm going to select the AS um, 16E. It's showing up play 0708. This is confusing. Oh, the Lynx mixer is already installed. Let me pop that up. Oh, okay. Digital in 44.1. So it's seeing the clock from the Hilo. So I bet if I change that on the Hilo, it will change on here. And as you can see right here, it did change 176.4. Hmm. So how do I get play? O oh, one, digital out one right here. Why don't I have play O one? I know two. Takes a while to apply the phase lock loop, doesn't it? Huh. I noticed on my um. On my topping D90, it now shows 176.4 kilohertz, so they are in sync with each other and working. Problem is, is I don't have play 01 and 02 as a device. I have only play 03 and 04. <laughs> Oh, and it's speakers. Oh, 
It makes it makes the default one speakers. Okay. I'm an idiot. See, I'm a fucking idiot. So if I go into this. Can I change it to 24, 176? I can't. So I can only go up to 24, 44.1 if I want to use that. So I'm going to change the hot, the helo to back to 44.1. And I'm going to have it on 24 bit if I can. <laughs> it says it's out of range. I'll have to reclock. Come on, reclock. There we go. Working. <laughs> so if I go in back into here, I go to playback speakers, which I'm going to rename that. I'm going to use 24, 44.1. Looks good to me. Um, there we go. Topping D90. I'm going to wait for it to lock sync. But now I'm going to go back into here. Change the output. Topping D90 links AS16E. Apply. Is that locked? It takes a lot to lock. So I noticed it <laughs> It probably takes a good five minutes for it to lock sync with the master clock. Interesting. But yeah, I looked at it, I'm like, where's my 01 and 02? <laughs> well, it made it calls it speakers, which is kind of weird. Hey. Whatever. And then what I'm going to do also is I'm going to go in here, recording devices, and my default record starts out at 0102. So, okay. So we're going to change that to thanks, Hilo. Two channel 24 bit. 44.1, yes. There we go. Still working the lock sync. So it takes a while to lock sync. Kind of weird, huh? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and kick the stereo, my stereo on, and we're going to see if it will play audio. Okay, so it says locked, which is good. So what I'm going to do before I just blast this out, I'm going to go to the volume mixer, mute it, play something. Okay, it didn't listen to me. Oh, because I muted this. Okay, it works. I'm going to turn that down. Damn, it's working. I can't play this for too long. You guys probably can barely hear it because, you know, my microphone. Okay, I'm going to turn it down now. We got audio out. It works. <laughs> so, the the DAC works. I have to test the the Hilo out. I mean, it's sand clock from it, so that's good. Um, but I'm currently using my microphone into my Zoom F4 for this um, video. But it's working. That's the topping. It's working just fine. <laughs> I have to clean up this big mess in my room. It took several hours to... Um, <laughs> finalize all this stuff and get it going because it was a mess. It really was. Um, it was a pain in the butt to do. So I'm going to do some more cleanup work, get things um, settled down. I'm also going to test the, um, the ADC, make sure it's working. So 
I'm going to test that out here in a bit. I'll actually probably record a video using it. See you then. Okay, so we are back on the computer, and I've had the Lynx AES 16E card installed in my computer and running for a little over a week now. So I'm going to um, give you some impressions of how it's done so far and um, how I have it set up. So um, immediately when I connected my um, my DAC, the Topping D90, and my ADC, the Lynx Helo, to the um, Lynx AS16E card, um, they just worked <laughs> right out of the box. Um, after I installed the driver for the, um, the AS16E card, everything just worked flawless. Um, for the most part and you're hearing me right now through the audio chain going into the AS 16e so hopefully I'm coming in nice and clear and um, There's no random dropouts ticks or anything um, We're like that um, My mini fridge is running so um, when the compressor kicks on off it will make like a like a tick noise or like you know like a comp Refrigerator you know how that makes a noise when it kicks on off so you might hear that but um as far as um, noise in the room right now, I can slightly hear the fans from my um, my um, desktop, but um, everything else, is, the background's pretty much quiet. There is a TV um, going in another room, so you might slightly pick that up. But um, I am going through the audio chain here, through the Lynx AS16E card. And if you can look right here, you can see the volume mixer. Um, it says Lynx AS16E. So... Um, a couple things to note, um, the Lynx AS16E card, it is a 16 um, channel um, card, and if you're not using all those channels, like in my case, like I said, I'm using one DAC, one ADC, I recommend you put it in two channel mode. So you go into the Lynx mixer, and as you can see, um, now I don't have as many um, controls as I did before. When I first hooked up, remember this thing had like... 15,000 different controls. That's because I put it in two channel mode. Doing this will allow it to um, use less system resources. Because um, when you're when you have when you have all those other channels enabled and you're not really using them, um, that can affect CPU performance a little bit. It can add some overhead. So if you're not using all those channels, just turn them off. And to do that, you go up into settings and then advanced adapter settings. I hope I don't lose audio by messing with this. Okay, um, so as you can see, I have the Lynx AS16E card via PCI slot four, and channel mode will be on 16 by default. You just set it to two channel mode and then hit save. Don't restart yet because there's another step into that process. But I did put it into two, two channel mode, and um, that can help. Um, another thing is when you first get it, um, you generally want the the master clock to be your ADC because the ADC is going to perform the absolute best if it's using its internal clock. Um, so you're going to have the AS16E card sync to your ADC's clock, in my case, the Lynx Helo. So on, by default, this will be set to internal, meaning the AS16E card uses its own internal clock. And that means it will have to um, perform um, clock recovery of the incoming... Um, ASABU signal from your ADC and um, that can cause a little bit of jitter issues there. Um, what I recommend is um, using the um, your main ADC as your main master clock. So um, as you can see right here, digital N1, you'll click on this and it should see um, a sample rate. It should see a signal coming in on that if you have your ADC connected. Um, so you just click on that and you want to also make sure you have Synchro Lock turned on. This is um, Lynx's like advanced um, jitter reduction phase lock loop um, technology. And when I when when we first installed the driver, you saw it took a long time. Well, actually, um, now it 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 pretty much takes like maybe under a minute now. Like it locks pretty fast now. Now that I put it in two channel mode, and I keep I um, keep my Lynx Helo on forty four point one and keep this on rate lock. Um, it When I first boot the computer, it actually locks a lot faster. So when I initially done it, maybe what's what made it so um, long to clock is because um, when I started out, I started with 176 um, 
kilohertz. And obviously those higher sample rates, um, locking sync to that is going to be take a little bit longer because um, you're dealing with a much faster rate. So, um, and as far as sample rates concerned, at least on Windows 7, I do recommend you stay at 44.1 kilohertz because you don't have the um, the multiples of 44.1, like 176 available in um, WDM dropdown. Um, I believe it's still available in ASIO though, but um, in WDM, as we saw previously, um, 176 and 88 are not available. Only the multiples of 48 are available. Now, if you're if you're mainly using this um, for um, video broadcast stuff like that, um, the record you know stuff for broadcast, you would want to put this on 48. So you put your um, to change the sample rate. It's going to use the sample rate of what your um, ELO is using if you're using that as your um, as your main master clock. So to change this to 48, you go on your um, ADC the helo and change the sample rate to 48 and this will change and reflect that and it will have to relock you might have to um if this says out of range because you change the sample rock or the sample rate you'll um just turn synchro lock on or off and then turn it back on and that will cause it to reclock and relock to that new sample rate if that makes sense but um you as you can see we are indeed getting signal here but those are a couple things you want to do. Um, I recommend you keep this at 44.1 because um, your DAC is going to use this sample rate that your um, ADC is using because your ADC is the master clock. And you don't want to have any resampling done at the at the Windows Mixer stage. Um, so you want to keep um, the, whatever sample rate you use here, you want that to be the same in your um, sound settings. So if I go into here and on your DAC and ADC, you want this to be 24 bit and then the sample rate that you are using, whether it be 44.1 or 48. Um, you want to make sure this matches, otherwise, you'll have resampling. So, if I show you, two channel 24 bit 44.1, that's what you want to, um, you want to definitely keep that. Um, and as you can see here as well, all those um, playback and record devices went away because I changed another setting. Um, number of WDM devices. By default, this will um, be eight WDM devices, which means you'll have eight different um, devices in here, which you guys saw earlier in the video, right? When we first installed the AS16E card, the drivers for it. Um, if you're not using more than one DAC or ADC, you want to change number of um, WDM devices to um, one. So that is what I did. And the reason why it was eight is because you have two channels per WDM devices, you know, a left and right channel that you can map. So, you know, eight times two is 16, right? But um, I did also change that. And to change that, you go to advanced and then it's driver options. And whenever I click on this, it will cause the audio to like glitch up a second because it's like pulling some settings for WDM. So I'm not going to click on it for right now because... Um, it will mess up the audio for this recording, most likely cause some glitchiness there. But that is another thing you want to do is you want to go into here and change number of WDM devices to one as well. If you're using a similar configuration as to mine. Now, another thing is, um, when you come in the links mixer and you set what you got to set, you know, um, set your preferred clock source to digital N1, your ADC, um, turn on synchro lock and wait until it locks before you do any critical recording or listening or anything like that. Um, like I said, um, now it takes probably like a minute, maybe under a minute to lock, um, especially in the two channel mode. Usually after you boot your computer and you open everything up, by the time you do that, you'll have lock. So you just go in the links, you just open up the links mixer and you can check. Um, and you also wanna make sure on restart or whatever that these settings are um, contained. Um, so what I did was I went into Mixer and I went save scene after I did my settings and I just saved it to documents and um, I didn't have to come in here and reload the scene or anything. It just seemed like the settings stuck after I um, restarted the computer, which is good. But you'll want to turn synchro lock on, wait for it to lock, and you'll want to turn rate lock on and keep it at 44.1 because you just want to make sure that it doesn't like change anything else or otherwise you'll have resampling. But um, those are the settings I did here. And... Um, once you are content with your settings, I do recommend you close out the Lynx Mixer completely because the Lynx Mixer is a little bit of a CPU hog. It can use it, it seems to use around like 
eight to nine percent of my CPU usage. So you don't just want to keep this running in the background, especially if you're doing critical recording. You come in here, you set what you got to set, you close it out, and um, your CPU usage should um, drop as soon as you exit this out. Um, probably because you know it's constantly checking the status and the, all the VU menu, all the VU meters and all that advanced stuff there. But um, another thing is if you want to listen to uh, what you're bringing in as far as the ADC. Um, say you want to hear your mic back with absolute zero latency. You will go up to the record 01 plus 02 channel and see how it ha has the two M's that are that are lit up blue. Well, when they're lit up blue like that, um, that means they're currently muted. Muted as in you listening back to the device. It doesn't mean muted as in um, the application or the person can't hear you because obviously you're hearing me right now even though this is muted, right? This is for listening back out through your um, playback channel with near zero latency because it's not going through WDM or anything like that. So uh, this has the same effect as going into going into the Lynx Hilo here and going to listen back to this device except without the latency. Because if I if I did it here, there would be a there would be some latency there. Um, there would be a little bit of delay. Um, if I unmute here. It will be dead on. And when I did that, you probably heard the echo from the stereo, right? From the power amplifier behind me. Um, usually when you unmute, you want to have headphones on, you know. Um, but that will allow you to listen with pretty much dead on zero latency. Um, so if you want to be able to listen to the mic you're bringing in, or maybe you have like a cassette deck hooked up in your archiving, but you want to be able to listen to it, make sure it's coming in okay. You can put some headphones on or... In the case of cassette deck, you, you can just use a stereo because you're not going to have that um, that feedback issue. But um, this is that 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 is a way to allow you to listen back with pretty much zero latency. You also have um, some volume controls, but I recommend for optimal performance, you leave this stuff as is, 0.0. .0 don't mess with it. If you have to adjust any um, volume or volume or anything, I recommend you do it through your ADC. Um, Make sure you have the right trim levels, etc. set there. But um, for absolute best performance, leave this as is. Don't mess with it. Um, if you have something coming in from your ADC, say you have one mic um, preamp set up, and you're just coming in through the left channel, um, you can center it here as to where it will go out both the left and right channel. However, I recommend you do it through the ADC if the ADC offers that. Such as in the Lynx Hilo, it allows you to center um, the left channel or even the right channel depends how you have it set up It allows you to center it to come out of both the left and right channel So that's why you see that's why you even though I have one mic preamps hooked into my Lynx Hilo You see I'm coming out both the left and the right channel. That's because I have the, the Lynx Hilo Mixing that to both so I'm not doing it through the Lynx mixer software I'm doing it through the ADC and that's actually how I recommend you do that if your ADC offers that otherwise if it doesn't you can come in the Lynx mixer and you can center that within here, if that makes sense. So if you was only coming in through the left channel, you have this knob up here, which you can center. And it will, if you hover over it um, as you're turning it, it will give you like a um, percentage or whatever. And obviously you'd want that to say 0.0, .0, .0 which means dead center. But um, anyway, that is what the Lynx mixer looks like. Um, another thing is... Um, I've tried to mess around with ASIO and FUBAR, and I wasn't able to get it to work. Um, there was basically no audio output, even though um, it was acting like it was spitting out audio. FUBAR was. It wasn't spitting out audio. Um, ASIO, you only really need to use that if you're really concerned about um, latency. So if you're using this in like a music production, um, like, you know, if you're using it for music production or whatever, you have instruments coming in, you need to hear them back with absolute zero latency, stuff like that, you'd want to use ASIO. Um, people will argue, oh, ASIO is higher quality. Well, um, Wasapi um, is bit perfect if you have the same exact sample rate in the window settings and the volume on the volume mixers and the volume on the application is maxed out to 100% on everything. If you do that... Um, the Windows Mixer kind of has a hands-off approach and it'll be bit perfect. You can also do um, Wasapi Exclusive Mode, which will ensure it will be bit perfect. So you don't have to use ASIO 
unless you need that absolute low latency. Uh, for playing back uh, music through FUBAR or even just talking through the microphone through like Skype or something like that or even recording a video, you don't need ASIO. The latency is not going to be an issue. Um, so actually, I don't really use ASIO. Um, I tried to spit out via ASIO and it picked up the Lynx um, AS16E card just fine and you had the Lynx um, ASIO control panel. Um, but I had issues. So one thing I do recommend is you change the ASIO buffer to 512. Even though it's not using, I'm not using ASIO, if you keep this at 32, it, it can use a little bit more CPU resources in the background. So um, to help avoid any occasional dropouts or ticks or any, any hiccups, I recommend you just change this to 512. If you have an application open that can use ASIO as an output for audio, um, that application will lock on to the AS16E card and say this is set to 32 and you try to change it to 512, you go back to this and you'll notice, hey, it didn't stick. It still stayed at 32. You have to go into the program that uses ASIO output, go into the Lynx ASIO control panel from that program, then change the buffer size and there to 512 and you'll come into here and you'll see that it reflects that. So that was the case with FUBAR is it was locking on to it even though I wasn't even outputting to via ASO, I was still using WDM or Wasapi and FUBAR just because FUBAR had that capability of talking via ASO because I had the ASIO plugin installed. It was holding on to the Lynx AS16E card and to the buffer size there. And see, that can cause issues. Um, so I went into the FUBAR ASIO settings into the, the Lynx control panel from there, changed it to 512 and it reflected over here. What I ended up doing was I just removed the ASIO plugin from FUBAR completely. Um, so even if I have FUBAR open, it doesn't lock on to my car like that. Because um, I don't use ASIO and it's like, well, it didn't work. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm fine with Wasapi. But um, if you use ASIO, keep that in mind that if you change something here, your program might be overriding it and holding on to the card. So you have to change it from within the program's ASIO settings and pull up the links links um, ASIO control panel from there. But um, once I released that, I came in here and I set this to 512 and it has stuck. And um, even though I'm not using ASIO, I still recommend you change this. Um, just because keeping it at 32, 32 is pretty demanding. Um, so that's something I did. Um, as far as these other settings, I didn't mess with any of this other stuff. There's hardware, hardware payload size, which it doesn't allow you to change that for some reason. It's just set to auto. Um, but I don't recommend you come in and change any of this stuff. Um, there's dual wire in, dual wire out. That's if you're using a ADC or DAC that uses dual wire, such as the Pacific Microsongs does, so you'll have to change that for that. But none of these settings you have to change except um, change the two-channel two mode and change the WDM devices to one. One meaning one for record and then one for playback. As you can see right here, I only have one device showing up on each, which is the devices I use. So that's perfect. But um, as far as that, there isn't anything else you need to change. And like I said, Lynx Mixer is a little bit of a CPU hog in the case that uses like eight, eight to nine percent of my CPU, <laughs> just having it open. So um, once you come in here, you set what you got to set, you fully close it out. Makes sense. You don't just minimize it. But because um, like I said, even if you exit this out, those settings stick on AS, AS16 e card, and those settings still apply when you have the program closed out. Make sense? So you don't have to keep the program open to use the card. Um, we come in here, this is just a place to change the settings for the card. Make sense? You don't have to keep it open. Um, change the settings you need, and then hit exit. Make sense? And the stuff will stick in the background. But um, something I haven't been able to figure out is they say you're supposed to be able to see the bit depth. Um, but I don't see the bit depth anywhere. Even if I hover over these inputs and outputs, I don't see the bit depth. I can right click. There's nothing on right click. So that's something, Lynx, if you are watching, how do you know what bit depth the DAC or ADC is using? The Lynx Hilo doesn't show what bit depth it spits out. All you can change or view in the Hilo is the sample rate. So is it communicating over ASABU using 24 bit? I would assume, I would hope so. What about the DAC? My DAC only shows sample rate as well. <laughs> um, it shows sample rate and it shows PCM. Um, 
because it was spitting DSD, it showed DSD, but um, it doesn't show bit depth on my DAC either. So how do I know what the Lynx AS16E card is communicating to my DAC over? Is it 24-bit? I would hope so. Um, it doesn't show you anywhere in here. I've looked all over. Uh, maybe I'm blind. I didn't see it anywhere in the settings. It does not show what bit depth is being used. Um, I would assume 24-bit. I would hope so. Um, most, if not all, DACs and ADCs will support that. But maybe if you have an older legacy, legacy product, you, you, you kind of want to know. Like you, n Not presenting that information is kind of um, troublesome. So um, I will be like reaching out to them about that. Like, hey, we need to see this information. We need to know this. But I'm going to exit this out. Um, but um, as far as the AS16 card, like I said, you plug it in. Um, I use um, Magami AS EBU cables. Um, and then I use the Redco um, breakout cable, which you've seen earlier in the video. That allows me to um, just have one AS EBU out and one AS EBU in and get rid of all that bulkiness and unnecessary connectors. I have enough wires behind my workstation as is. But as you can see, the devices pop up. You can come in here, you can rename them like I did, change the icon. As far as levels, keep it all at 100. Disable all enhancements. Advanced, 24-bit, 44.1. This has to match the sample rate that you're using um, on your equipment. To um, prevent any prevent um, windows from um, resampling, of course. I turn these on. And that's all you guys see. And as you can see right here, you, you can see the Lynx Hilo connected via the Lynx AS16E card, and it just it moves around. Another thing I recommend is um, your onboard audio controller, most likely it's Realtek, go into the BIOS and completely turn off the HD audio controller. Turn, completely turn off Realtek. Uninstall drivers do that. You don't want you don't want that popping up at all. Another thing is um, the NVIDIA drivers for um, HDMI and DisplayPort um, can cause some issues, I've heard. So um, uninstall the NVIDIA HD audio driver. I did that, but it popped back up for some reason, probably because when I installed the driver, I had that enabled as an option. So it just, boom, um, puts itself back on there, <laughs> which is kind of weird. But um, you'll see like all your monitors and stuff popping up in playback. And what I did was I just right-clicked them all and um, disabled them. I recommend you do that. Um, just um, disable all your um, anything to do with your monitors and NVIDIA and stuff like that. Just keep um, your equipment here enabled. I could also disable um, it for my Logitech webcam, but um, I leave that as just a backup. And plus, I don't know if it'll bugger up my webcam if I disable this, but um, disabling the audio for the monitors um, has no effect on them. I still see my images just fine. <laughs> so I, I do recommend you do that. Another thing is if you have multiple network controllers, go into device manager and disable any network controllers you're not using. So I'm using the 10 gig fiber card from Mellanox um, cause you know, this is a workstation I'm overkill. I'm I'm not your average consumer. I'm, a, I'm like in a very niche market, right? <laughs> so. I also have two onboard Ethernet ports, you know, two onboard Intel NICs, and I don't use those because I use I'm using a 10 gig fiber card. So I went in the device manager and disabled those because um, networking drivers can cause issues with audio, and those are just things you need to mess with. Performance and power options, you want to set that to maximum performance, and you want to make sure your CPU is not um, down clocking because sometimes that causes causes issues with audio. But as far as that. Um, yeah, this is the Lynx AS16 card um, hooked up. It just works. And people are like, oh, is it only going to work in my in a DAW? No, it can work. It works with everything. It has WM drivers, direct sound, ASIO, um, kernel streaming, core audio if you're on Mac. Um, it has the full package. It will work with everything. It will work with Spotify, FooBar, Google Chrome. It works with everything, okay? See, see this over here? This is the, the volume mixer um, as part of um, Windows. It interfaces with that just fine. Another thing I forgot to show you guys is, of course, when I installed the driver, you want to make sure you you set your, um, your device as default. Otherwise, some programs such as Google Chrome, you're like, why am, why am I not getting audio? Probably because there's another device in here that's set as default and um, it's spitting out via that. 
instead of your um, Lynx AS16 card. So just make sure you come in here and set this as default, which I have done. But um, yeah, that's what I recommend um, doing. I also recommend you muting system sounds. I just do this right from within the volume mixer, but another thing is in sounds in here, do no sounds, but I still also recommend muting over here as well. Communications, I recommend setting this to do nothing because sometimes if you're on a call or something, it'll lower your volume. And you're like, why did my volume get lower? I, rep I recommend setting it to that for optimal performance. But um, yeah, as far as recording, you guys are obviously hearing me right now. I'm going through the Lynx AS16 card. I'm using the Lynx Hilo. Um, and if I open up Audacity, I can demonstrate right here. I'm uh, when you're using Audacity, I, I recommend you use um, Windows Wasapi for best best um, performance and for true 24-bit recording. As you see right here, the Lynx Hilo pops right up. Okay, and you may see, well, oh, your DAC also pops up. Yes, because this is Wasapi loopback recording. Um, but we have the Lynx Hilo interfacing via the Lynx AS16 card right there. Put you want to set this to two two channel stereo. And then your playback device, when you're listening back, the topping do 90 over the Lynx AS16 card. And you can click right here to start monitoring, and you can obviously see um, I'm getting signal. It just works. Works with everything. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. It's not just a limited to uh, DAW only type of deal. No, it work with everything. So if I hit record, you can obviously see my signals are coming in. They're looking pretty healthy, right? Um, and I, I go play back. I had the volume down for Audacity quite a bit here, but um, you you probably heard that. Let me replay that. Board, you can also see my signals are coming in. They're looking pretty healthy, right? Yeah. See, it just works. Um, close out that. And another thing, after restart or reboot, um, your um, your stuff sticks as far as the name that you you name everything like Top Me Ninety, the um. The volumes for all my programs, they stay. So somebody said, oh, whenever you reboot, um, the, um, the Lynx AS16 card um, puts everything back to 100%. And um, that's not the case. It does stick after reboot. Maybe they were talking about the Lynx mixer. Um, but as far as actual just Windows volume mixer and as far as WDM devices, the names of WDM devices, the settings of WDM devices, that stuff sticks after reboot. You don't have to worry about wiping it out when you reboot. Everything just works. It just works. <laughs> I mean, I can't really say much more than that. And as far as playing music back, um, I can't do too much pl playing music back because I don't want to um, get a copyright strike. But I will demonstrate that the stuff just works, okay? And obviously, if you're you're doing critical listening, you want best performance. You want to make sure the volume is at 100%. I turn this down because it's going out through a power amplifier and everything. And if I have 100%, it's really fucking loud. And I have other people in the house and stuff and don't want, you know, it gets annoying. So I have to keep the volume down low, you know, during most of the time. But um, yeah, I'll demonstrate some of that. Okay, so we're on the second screen here and I have Google Chrome open. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys that I do indeed get audio out. So here's just a video from Audioholics. And I'm gonna go ahead and, you see right here, you got the volume mixer. I turned the volume up. All right, my friends, we are back. It is late night. So you see audio that is coming out via the Topping D90 over the Lynx AS16E um, card. Just works. Okay, so you don't have to worry about there. There's no delays. You don't have to worry about lip sync. It's dead on. Okay, guys, because some people are like, well, is there is there a slight delay with it using the card? Or is there any hiccups? No, it just works. <laughs> I mean, I can't say much more than that. Um, now, as far as FUBAR... Let me go in here and um, show you some of my gold CDs. So this is my food bar here. I'm still working on it. I have, I'm redoing my entire library. So I have a lot of stuff that's missing. But if I go in here and go to disk mode, look at that. Do you see this with some normal people? No. So I have to play something in here, like some um, music in here, like the Eagles. I have the volume down. So let me turn the volume up. I can't play too much of it. Only only a few seconds, because like I said, YouTube is strict with copyright.
So I'm not sure how, like I said, I don't have the volume up so loud. And like I said, I'm using the, I'm using the handheld condenser mic. So it's going to attenuate some of that. So let me move my chair over. Maybe you guys can hear a little bit better. You might have to have headphones on because like I said, my mic has a good job of attenuating most of the back, the back um, background. Um, been a while since I've listened to that <laughs> but um, like I said it just it just works okay you don't have to worry about the Lynx AS16 card um, it just works um, so there's that and how I, I like I said I'm not using ASIO I tried it but didn't have too much luck with it maybe if I worked with mess with it a little bit more it would have done its job but Meh. Um, to get ASIO up via FUBAR 2000, you have to have the ASIO um, plugin installed or the component. But as you see right here, the drop down, boom, it just pops up. It just, it just pops up, like I said, because the WDM drivers. But yeah, it just, um, that's just a quick look at the um, Lynx AS16 card. Um, incoming audio works, outgoing audio works, it just works. What more can you say than that, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't think I have much more to um, tell you guys about the card. Um, as far as reliability and how it's been, I've had it for a little bit over uh, a week now. And, um, yeah, I haven't had too many issues at all. Um, as far as ticking dropouts, I haven't experienced any of that. I did have one tick or pop but that was when I was uh, multiplexing a 10 gig video file. So I think at the time I was taxing the CPU and maybe I call, I caused a little bit of a DPC spike there and that's what caused that. Um, I'm gonna have to play around for a little bit more, but um, that's the only issue I've had was I've had one tick or pop um, when I was doing something very intensive on the computer. And I think it was taxing the CPU. I'm gonna be multiplexing there a video here soon. So I'm gonna check the CPU usage when I'm doing that and see if it was, just, you know, CPU usage. Obviously, if you are if you are doing something very intensive on your computer, you're like slamming the CPU 100%. Um, yeah, you, you're more prone to having a DPC um, issue there, latency issue, but that will go away as soon as you <laughs> stop doing whatever is maxing your computer out, right? But I was doing video rendering um, and didn't have any issues while I was rendering a video. Um, so... Like I said, it's been pretty smooth. Um, when you play something, there's no like delays or kick-ons or anything like relays clicking. No, it just boom. As soon as you play something, it just comes out. Um, so it just works. And the Topping D90 um, is working flawless with it. Um, it's using an AK4118 um, SP, diff re SP diff receiver and it just works. So um, yeah, I have, I have nothing more, more to really say on this. Uh, that's going to wrap it up. If you guys have any questions about the card or the Lynx Hilo or um, the Topping 90 or how this stuff connects, let me know. Um, but um, that is all for now, guys. And um, thanks for watching.